Hi guys, welcome back to yet another video. Today I'm at Whitley Bay FC to go for the, the game against Brighton Tank. Um, I'm here to enjoy the pit pit, but he's so bright, I'm so bright, I'm super bright up there with the Bay Watch TV lads. Um, we do commentary. Uh, I will be doing a half time analysis with them. Um, I might try and see if I can get someone get put that in the vlog. Uh, I don't know if it's going to hear me very well over the wind, but it's very windy today. I'll be here uh, One nil to Willie Bay. Ali Almond with the first goal of the game. Um, not really much has happened so far. Uh, I've actually been involved a bit in commentary. You might have had a little bit over me. Um, uh, but you know, honestly, it's pretty much my first chance of the game. That it was a good goal because of the big deflection. Um, see so what happens now. Uh, one all now, Curtis Round with the goal. Um, Adam Boy is fading in behind. Uh, two shots in the good. A few players in the defender. Keeper and um, the lads claimed the fourth side, but it wasn't given. And it's one all now. I think it's quite a long time. Here on the screen, it says half time with Harry, but this week it's half time with Harry and Jacob as we're talking about how the first half has went from, well, two different fans' perspectives. So this will be a quite enjoyable, quite different, and of course interesting. So, uh, how do you think the game's gone from your two's perspective in the half? Well, I think uh, we started off the game fairly poorly. We didn't have a few half chances, we didn't even get to over possession very well. We'd obviously used God for the goal uh, to make it 1-0, and uh, probably could have been. You know, I'm, I'm going to try to take half chance for this because the game's been pretty qu quiet. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I tried to uh, talk up like it's better. It's not been a good game. There's really not much to talk about. But uh, even I'll admit the goal. I thought maybe the goal probably would have been was offside if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. But, um, so I'm. I'm yeah, everyone that's divided opinion, I imagine. Yeah, I think. So I've got the way I think that red that is not going to be a red card for you. I do still think that should have was a red, but. You know, it's, well, I think it's one that maybe some refs would have given it, some ones that others would, would, would have. So it's the first tackle of the game as well, so maybe the refs sitting in the back of his head. It's early on in this game, do I really want to do this to maybe change the way the game will be played? And to be fair, you might have just thought it was a yellow card, some people will have, obviously. But. Yeah, that's a fair point with being how early on it is, because usually if it, for a red card being given that early on, it would be something that's very serious, because yeah. obviously there'd be certain challenges where referees have like, got no choice, no matter what they hit, it's in, obviously. It's got to show intent to hurt someone yeah. really at that stage, yeah. I imagine. Yeah. And you don't want the game to, to be ruined so early on. I mean, it hasn't, like say, been a great game as it is already, so if that was to happen, it would have just been, I imagine, nine men behind the ball and you used to try to score and then a counter attack, which is not what you want. Nah, it's not, but uh, it's the way that things have been going, really, and uh, obviously the game's had loads of points, and that's really just died down. Really, I mean, even on commentary, we've obviously just been making jokes and all, and it's yeah. kicking, and it's just really not much to talk about not the game. And, uh, yeah, and you can have points and take them quickly, like, like I say, lots of throws, but they could be taken very quickly and get the game going, as we, we see at higher levels, but it just hasn't happened. Hopefully, I imagine this will be the case, that the game will start to pick up pace, be a lot more open and a lot more enjoyable in the second half. Yeah, I guess we'll have to just see. I think things do tend to open up in the second half, but it's, it's just one of those games where it really feels like it, it's just not going to kick in. Yeah. Things that, like, it doesn't feel as like and I know you mentioned that one point during the first half, you mentioned that the team being team doesn't have anything to play for. That could, of course, be into a factor because when you have something to play for, you can be obviously able to find yourself to get forward and get to uh, really get to play more, really. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it usually doesn't work out. Do, you know, do your games, when they're like this, tend to be better in the second half, or is it usually just like that throughout the entire game? Like, we don't tend to always have games like this really. We tend to be a very more attacking team, so it's, yeah. it's, we don't tend to have very boring games, we'll just say that. But, um, well, like you said uh, on commentary, uh, your stadium had the most goals last season, so it's clearly quite enjoyable in the games. Yeah, we just play very open. Well, at least we do the underground force, I'd say that, but then obviously 
Carl Torres coming his pick. He's uh, using back five formations I mentioned earlier. Uh, so obviously that's a bit more defensive. Uh, we had a lot of players leaving uh, because of that decision. Cleaned out a lot of the squad because, uh, because obviously that players not thinking in. Because if you're not, you know, if you've got players that are obviously not going to fit in to the system, you're pretty much going to let them go. Because it's just no point, isn't it? I think really from the manager's perspective, that's kind of putting them down like the marker, isn't it? Yeah, um, and especially the back five, I mean, it's probably the formation where I was going to have the most. If you had a back four and then you moved to a back five, your full backs, unless they suddenly become extremely good at attacking to the point where they kind of look like they're wingers, you just pretty much, you don't see a way of getting them in your team. I mean, there's plenty of teams who've done that, I'll, I'll just choose Tottenham as an obvious example, but they went from a back five to a back four, you obviously went the other way. And you have to either make those players who've already got extremely good at defending or attacking either way it changes, which is very difficult to do because you're either a full back and a win back, they don't seem like much of a difference, but they really are. Yeah, I guess they're playing much of a win back to really out in the same way. They're just back and forth constantly, it's definitely a difficult role, but uh, yeah, so like you say, you either have to train them up, which is difficult to do at this level. Yeah. And, uh, so if you can do both roles, you can play properly, I imagine, at a high level. You can play very, very good. So, let's like, say you, you have to change. And, uh, how many midfielders have you played? Two or three this season? I, think, I, I believe it's three. I'm not too sure. Like, I didn't watch... I didn't play... I never watched him in the last game. I didn't play... It's a different watch I played to Carl, so I don't really know too much about his system. Uh, but he did a Q&A just before his first game home. And he said, that's what he said about him, with the five and a half, five, three. Two formations, that's how I know that's what he does. Right, okay. And like it's two strikers it tends to work itself. But if you yeah. have two ones, or maybe one that holds up and then one that's more better with the ball at his feet, more technically yeah. better. But uh, it, 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 seems, it seems to have treated you relatively well this season. You're not exactly, uh, you're in a similar position to us in terms of you're not going to get relegated, you're not going to get promoted, and it's, it's not a bad place to be in, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, like, I know you said we did really well at the end of last season, we had to finish. We did the same, we were at the start of last season, we had six games in beaten last, last, last season. And um, then we said it was like a 4-1 defeat against Burnley. And so we really were not going to manage when we started to get, like, things happened the wrong way. And then we played to Burnley against, um, um, yeah, I mean, like you say about the you know, like, 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 you were concerned about the season, you know, like, 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 didn't play with the season, but not to the same degree, and that is probably why we're not in a high position to work with this time last year. But if both teams really play in Redcar, it all just comes down to how can we both start next season? And if you can go the first eight games doing pretty well, maybe lose one, not go on beat, but win a good five or six of them, then that, that, that shows that you might have a chance. And uh, yeah. like I say, you've got the club early on, which we did live down. Confidence that it's massive early on in the season. It's much more important than you go on and run it, you can go on in the middle of the season. It doesn't feel as damaging at the beginning. Even though they, they're theoretically the same thing, you can lose six at the beginning, you can lose six in the middle. At the beginning, it's so much more damaging because you do think, is this what, is this what we're going for the rest of the year? Yeah, I mean, we went into the season as one of the favourites for promotion. So we picked up like Adam Wheatley, um, Gideon Jarvie, and as well, as I said, we could talk about this last season. Then Isaac Walker coming back from Life Spartans, and, and, and you know, Ben Carpenter, Ben, and he did, did well at Life, and then he's came back here because there were uh, work uh, reasons so why he came back. Yeah. And so then we had so many goal scores, and we couldn't start, we just couldn't score, and it was very obvious. Right, guys, back to the end of the video. Uh, there was quite a a fair bit of controversy right at the very end, last minute, there was a clear run ball in the box uh, for Whitley Bay, so I mean, well, I mean, they should have had a penalty. Uh, very clear run ball, but it wasn't given. It's like very late drama, loads going on, and uh, I, don't, I don't think the referee could have seen it. There's like loads of places possibly if he got in the way of his view. Or he was just being really dumb and didn't think it was ball, but yeah, it looks like a clear run ball. And, we didn't have a goal scoring opportunity. I don't know if we went bald, if we, I'll be honest, we got away with one. Um, I'll say, 
Well, this is my well, was my experience of a game of a game to be on commentary. I absolutely loved it. Honestly, I've met some lovely lads. Uh, commentating with two other lads called Harvey and Kinnan. Uh, we had a great laugh. They were absolutely lovely. And uh, do go and check out uh, Baywatch TV is the name of the YouTube channel. Do go check it out. There will be a link to the channel in the video description. Uh, just go and subscribe for it. So they give them, show them some love. Absolutely lovely lads. Uh, thank you very much to uh, them to and Daryl for inviting me onto the channel. That was what a hell of an experience. Absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, that is the end of the video. Thank you all, you guys, very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, goodbye.